people, I'm Sean from the Net Ninja, and this is HTML Basics Lesson 3 HTML Syntax and Structure. Alright, now in the last lesson, I uh, briefly mentioned that everything in HTML is pretty much controlled by a tag. So let's just have a quick recap on that. So we've got HTML, and it's a markup language, and all that's meaning is that we're marking up content. Uh, for displaying a browser and we do this via tags all right and there's loads of different type of tags we've got p tags for paragraphs h tags for uh, for headings which this example follows this is a h1 tag um, so that's going to display as a header or heading rather to a user in a browser all right so let's look at a, a few specific examples of tags and i'm going to jump over to notepad to do that all right so here we go I'm in Notepad right now, and uh, I've got a simple tag here. And by the way, when you're uh, when you're creating HTML files, what you want is a text editor that's not going to format text for you. And by that I mean, in the text editor, you can't make a, a font bold or change its font family or do anything like that. A good example of a text editor where you can format is Microsoft Word. What you want to use is something like Notepad without any of those options. Uh, there's loads of free text editors that have more advanced tools on the internet. One that I like is called um, Brackets, and that's free. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to use Notepad because we're going to do just a few simple tags. So, okay, what have we got here? We've got a P tag, which is a paragraph tag. So we've got the open angle bracket, the P, the close angle bracket. We've got our text in between, and then we've closed our tag off with the open angle bracket, the forward slash, the P, and a closed angle bracket. So what we'd say is that this text here is wrapped within this P tag. That's how we'd say. Um, so if someone said to you, hey, can you wrap this sentence in a H tag? You know what to do. You put the H opening tag, put the sentence, and then you put the H closing tag. So if we were to save this, which I already have done, and then display it in a browser, what we're going to see is this. And you might be like, well, that's just text. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what a paragraph text, uh, a paragraph tag does. It displays text to the user. I mean, that's what a paragraph is, right? However, if we were to change this to a H1, and we'll do that right now, and save it. I'm just pressing Control S, by the way. Uh, then we'll refresh this browser, and lo and behold, we've got a heading. And that's because the browser is saying, well, look, You've written H1, so I know this is a heading. So I'm going to make this big and I'm going to make this bold so that people viewing this website, they know it's a heading too. And that's what browsers do. They come with these default rules and styles. So depending on what tag you use, it displays it in a different way. So we've got these tags. There's more to it, however. Now then, tags can contain what's called attributes. And attributes, just think of them as a way of telling tags uh, more information about that tag, all right? And they're a thing that you're just going to have to learn. I mean, it would take me forever to go through every attribute that a tag could have. And not every tag can have every attribute. Different tags have different attributes. But there are a few global ones that every tag can have. So i give a few examples. And an attribute works like this. Um, you do your tag name, then a space, and then your attribute name. Um, in this case, we'll do class. That's a global attribute that can be applied to any tag whatsoever in HTML. Then you do an equal sign and you do some quotes and then you put the value of your attribute in the quotes. And right now, you don't need to worry about what this attribute means because I'm going to go over some specific attributes, the class included in later tutorials. All right. Just know for now that an attribute is just the attribute name then an equal sign, the quotes, and then you put the value of your attribute in the quotes. All right, uh, another example, and by the way, you can give multiple attributes to um, an element or a tag. So another example would be style. And we're wavering into the realms of CSS here. And by the way, this is quite bad practice. You wouldn't normally put a style attribute in uh, a tag itself that's called inline styling and it's frowned upon these days um, because you want to keep all of your styles in your cascading style sheet but for the pur purpose of this example we'll, we'll go ahead and use it if I was to put style color colon red um, and save this let's take a look at this it's turned red 
and I've just used, uh, done that via, via uh, a style attribute in the H1 tag. So just remember for now that attributes can be used within tags to give it more information. And we'll go through some specific examples later. All right, so we've got attributes. We've got, and I'm just going to delete these attributes for now, in fact. So we've got tags. We've got attributes uh, in the tags. And we've got the different styles in the browser, depending on the tag we use. Now then, if you wanted to you know, make, for example, a bit of this text, you want to emphasize it in some way or other. OK, so say we want to emphasize uh, this portion of the text right here. OK, we can nest another tag within the H1 tag. And we do that by just opening our tag um, using the tag name and then closing the tag at the end of the text. And notice we've opened within the H1, so we close within the H1 as well. All right, so this EM tag, what does that mean? Well, it means we're just emphasizing the text that's contained within the EM tag. All right, so let's save this and see what it does. So you can see we've still got this H1, and then right about here, it goes into italic form. And that's the browser saying, okay, well, it wants to emphasize this particular part of the text to the user, so we'll do it for it. And you can control the way this is emphasized via CSS, but that's a totally different course. So we can nest tags within other tags, and we can do it even deeper if we wanted to. Say we wanted to make this particular word bold, we can nest another tag within the EM tag. Um, we're going to use one called strong this time. We'll close that off and neaten this up a little bit. So notice again, we've opened the strong tag within the EM tag. So we close it within the EM tag as well. Let's save this out and refresh. And have I done something wrong? Uh, it's all going to be bold because it's a H1. But if we take uh, change this to a P, a paragraph, and save that again, you can see now we've got the paragraph text. This is still all italics because it's still being emphasized by the browser and then we've got this one word paragraph in the strong tag here which is bold all right so what else uh we'll do one more thing and that is indentation so say for example we've got loads of different tags okay and they're all nested within each other now you can imagine that pretty soon it's going to get illegible. It's going to be hard to read for you when you go back to your web page and for other coders who are making edits to your web page. So say we've got this for example and you might not know these tags yet. I'm just doing this for the purpose of this um, demonstration. I'm just going to use a series of div tags. Then we'll use a p tag maybe. In fact no we won't. We'll use an a tag. We'll change it up a little bit. And this href by the way, you've guessed it, is an attribute. Um, we'll just leave that blank for now. And we're going to cover H references later and link tags. So we'll put a link in there. And then I've even lost count of how many I've used four. So we'll close four div tags because they're all nested within each other. And yep, I've made a mistake. There we go. So right i'm looking at that and this is what four levels deep and <laughs> in typical websites things go maybe 10 15 20 layers deep all right so you can imagine how difficult it gets to look at this and think okay well where is the end tag for this if it's you know way over here somewhere um, or where is the start tag for this you know how do i where do i nest this next element it's going to get really difficult so what we do we do this thing called indentation and as a general rule of thumb, if you're nesting tags within other tags, what we tend to do is indent them. So we present this like this. Let me just give a line break after every tag, first of all. Uh, nearly there, there we go. Okay, so we put them on different lines, first of all. And that's still a little bit 
illegible. You still have to kind of work it out where this div tag ends and you have to count down three and it ends on, on this row here. So what we tend to do is indent every layer we go in. So we'll do that two and we'll do this three and we'll do this four. And then we do the same for the closing brackets. The closing tags, by the way, sorry. Um, and one more. And so now we can see that, okay, well, this div opens here and it ends there. This div opens here, ends there, opens here, ends there, and so forth. So it's a lot easier to read this. And I will be honest, Notepad goes a bit crazy when it indents. I mean, it doesn't need to be indented this much. Um, if you get um, a HTML text editor from the web, they would normally maybe indent it by something that seems like this much on each level. Something like that, okay? But um, you get the idea. We just indent them so then we can easily see where the tags start and where they end. So let's just have a quick summary. Right then. So we've already said that HTML uses tags to present content and tags start with an open angle bracket. You have the tag name, then the, uh, the close with a closed angle bracket. You put your content and then you close the tag off always at the end with an open angle bracket, forward slash, the tag name and a closed angle bracket. And pretty much anything that you're gonna use in HTML is controlled this way with tags. All right, so there's also many different kinds of tags. You've already seen I've used a P tag to display normal text. We've got a H1 tag, uh, tag to display headings. We've got a uh, an EM tag that we've used to kind of emphasize things. We've got the strong tag to make something bold, etc., etc. There's loads of tags depending on what content you want to display to the user. Next thing, tags can contain attributes and there's many different attributes. That's one of those things you're just gonna have to learn and we're gonna cover some on the way through this course, but there are literally tons of attributes and you're gonna have to go out there and maybe look at different ones. Um, whatever the attribute is, however, we always display it this way. We open the angle bracket, put the element name or the tag name, a space, then we put the attribute name. In this case, I've put class the equal sign, then the quotations, then you put your value of the attribute within the quotations. All right, so tags can, be, uh, tags can also be nested within other tags, and we saw that by nesting the EM and the strong tags within the P tag before. All right, what else? Tags are normally indented when they're nested for readability, and we've just literally done that with the div tags. So you can see that it's gonna be loads easier to read for you in the future when you come to edit your page and other coders when they're indented. All right, so that's pretty much it for this lesson. Um, in the next lesson, we're gonna start creating a web page and you're gonna start seeing results pretty soon. And um, yeah, it's gonna be fun, so I'll see you guys then.